Hi guys, in this video, I take you through my process of lighting and rendering a comic panel in Clip Studio Paint. This page is from Jonte, a comic series that we're working on at Sanar Animation Studios, commissioned by Propel Visions. We're in charge of color and lighting. Let's do this! Preparation. We create a shading folder, and then using the flats folder, we create a mask selection. We then create a light gray solid at about 70% in value. This helps define or represent the base color so that when you're lighting, you can still add highlights. Put the gray solid into a shading layer. Determine the light direction in the panels. Make sure that they're consistent with the other pages and camera angles. It is also a good idea to cross-check the script and see if there's a time indicated. Connect it with a circular arrow. The circle part indicates how the terminator will wrap around objects. This helps you to decide how to place shadows. Note, if the light direction does not favor visibility on the subjects, you are at liberty to move it around and ensure that the scene is easily readable. The next step we can do is to create the shadows. So for this, we create a fill layer with a dark blue fill. This will be the shadows layer. Leaving it as a fill layer object allows you to change the color at any time. Using the light direction, define the cast shadows by following the contours of the surfaces. Use a lasso tool as it is faster. You do this by adding or subtracting from the layer mask. You can also use an airbrush tool or blend tool to alternate between hard and soft edges as well as gradients. The closer an object is to another, the harder the edge of the cast shadow. The blend tool also works for softening edges on skin surfaces. Here, it's set to blur option in the tool properties. Repeat the same for the other panel. Constantly doing light studies and sketching human anatomy will help make figuring out lighting easier. Another way of looking at it is to think of the surfaces as 3D geometric shapes. For example, a cube, a sphere, a cylinder, or a prism. As light moves around the object, one part will be in shadow, another in light. This is the same concept as when lighting objects. Also consider the plane direction of the surfaces. So when a light hits the above leg, the foot will be fully lit, same as the surface, number three. But surface two will be partially lit as the plane direction is different from the light direction. Also note the surfaces obstructing light. In this case, the arm casting a shadow on the lady's top.
adding highlights. Create a light solid layer, set blending mode to add. Select mask and clear it by pressing the top clear icon. As with the shadow layer, define where the highlights will hit using the light direction as a reference. For lights, you paint them on using a soft airbrush so that they are not too bright and also to have more control. I have changed the color a bit and changed the blending mode to add or glow to emulate harsh sunlight. This can change depending on the light situation you want. lighting the car. This was a pivotal point in the story, so it had to look epic. I took extra time defining the light and reflections of the car. I used photo references from the internet to help with this. On every page, determine which are the main scenes and focus details on that panel of subject. This will drive the reader's attention naturally to that. adding a bounce light. This is optional depending on the amount of time you have to light a page. It adds to the roundness or volume of the lighting setup. One point to note is that it should always be brighter or not competing with the main key light. The bounce light can also refer to ambient light. Think of an overcast day, there is still light that seeps through. Considering this light makes the surfaces feel less flat. When you turn on the grey fill, you can be able to see the roundness effect better and adjust if need be. Adding glows or atmospheric perspective or haze. 
This is emulating the effect of the further an object is away from the viewer, the more faded or bluer it feels like. You can achieve this by selecting everything else behind the object you want in focus and creating a blue solid fill layer and setting the blending mode to lighten. Adding background shadows. Shadows usually are the same color as the ambient light, in this case, the sky. Here we add some highlights to the background to better balance the lighting setup. We also add glows to the highlights to emulate camera lens flares. Here I added a gradient to this background as I felt that it needed more contrast so that it could stand out more. I am using colors close to the skin tone to achieve better color harmony and to make it look and feel just right. I did the same for the other panels to make them look less plain. Add some clouds and make sure that they have the same light direction. Add a lens flare. Mask out glows to fit only inside the panels. A solid layer set to color mode helps check your values and see if they balance well, so that you have a good variation between white and black.
make them shine. Again, this is at your taste and not necessary. I usually choose the local color of the object beneath this layer and add saturation to determine the color of the glow. I add some finishing touches. and then export to Photoshop for further color correction and adjustments. I darken the middle background color so as to add contrast and have the characters pop out more. So that's my process of lighting and rendering a comic page in Clip Studio Paint. Let me know if you have any questions or feedback in the comments below. You can share some love by hitting the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.